Hi there folks, it's Golgan one for all back from the Transformers Review, and as you can already see, green t-shirt, which means Auto Assembly, which is in four days. Yes, Auto Assembly 2012 is nearly here. I'm getting excited, I'm sure a lot of people who are going are as well. Um, like I said before, and you know where this is going, if you're going, I will see you there, I will look forward to seeing you. If you're not... It's a shame you can't be there, but anyway, though, yes, August will soon be here, and the Great Weekend will be nearly here, so, no, that should, that should be good. But anyway, yeah, back from the Transformers review, and looking at a Cybertron character this time around, I haven't done one of these in a little while, but this is really one of those characters that has an importance in the series of, tra of Transformers, in the mythos of Transformers, in that not only is he the guardian of space and time, but he's also one of the original 13 Transformers, and... I just kind of gave away the whole point of the review, but there you go. So, yes, today we're going to be taking a look at Cybertron Vector Prime, a really, really gorgeous toy. Now, with the Cybertron series, Energon kind of really finished me off, almost, when it came to Transformers. I really could, I almost lost interest in Transformers. When Cybertron came along, I tried to watch it, but it just... It was just, eh. The Unicron Trilogy was kind of really the crux of the whole bad storytelling in Transformers, and I tried to even watch Galaxy Force and it didn't help, so really my whole knowledge of the show is limited because I only watched bits of it and I really didn't like it. So, when it comes to this character and his involvement in the show, I don't really know that much about it, but with that being said, Vector Prime is really one of those characters that has a huge place in Transformers, in that, um... He is one of the original 13 Transformers, and he is Primus' appointed guardian of space and time, meaning his whole purpose for existence is his whole role is to keep the flow of time and space running at a good rate, running at a very good pace, to make sure that nothing goes bad. And he's more like a watcher, in a lot of ways, watching to make sure that nothing happens during the space-time continuum. And not only that, he is ancient, and I mean... Um, Beyond the Dawn of Time Ancient, uh, like a uh, 9 billion years ancient, so he's quite an old Transformers, well you can see the cot more detail, but with that being said, though, despite him being old, he's very aloof, very serious and very powerful, and can warp both time and space. And originally Vector Prime was once the holder of the Matrix of Leadership before he left Cybertron to guard um, space and time, and his extraordinary exiles left him emotionally, culturally, politically disconnected with the rest of his race. And his whole role in Transformers is mostly just to keep an eye on the on the space time continuum. Um, but not only that, the Vector Prime's character has done a lot to make him very well known in the Balancing Act comic, which was the only Cybertron uh, comic that existed because Dreamwave went out of business, they went bankrupt, so with that happening, it killed any hope of there being a comic for the Cybertron series, but there you go. Um, his whole role in the Balancing Act, of course, being the Guardian of Space and Time, was he was there during a lot of the important events in Transformers, in that he was there during the curing of the Hate Plague, which happened in the return of Optimus Prime. Um, Vector Prime helped mend Optimus Prime and repair the time storm that was caused by Megatron in Beast Wars, and because of the awakening of Primus and Unicron in the original Marvel comics, Vector Prime returned to active service following the wake of Unicron across the multiverse. Um, to prevent or restore what damage the Dark God had, had inflicted during that whole time. And this was during, this was during Cybertron, when of course, at the end of Energon you saw, um, oh, what was it, uh, a new sun was created, and of course that caused a black hole, and, which is known as the Unicorn Singularity, and it's a whole, it was a whole mess that happened during that time. So during that time, of course, um, Vector Prime will uh, routinely convert with Alpha Trion on the, pro on the Autobots process, and Ramjet and Nemesis Prime came along, who were the followers of Unicron, attacked them, and nearly destroyed um, Alpha Trion, but also destroyed Vector Sigma as well. And of course, Vector Prime banished Ramjet to another dimension, and of course, Vector Prime was too weak to uh, maintain any more damage, so of course, he managed to go to Earth and play out the events of the Cybertron cartoon, or the Galaxy Force, whichever continuity you want to follow. And in the show, he was voiced, I know I didn't watch the show, but I'm aware of some of the voice actors he was played by. Um, he was voiced by Richard Newman, who of course played uh, Rhinox in Beast Wars, and in Japanese, um, his city was Sho Hayami, who was a bit of a veteran in Transformers as well. He voiced, um, I'm trying to remember who he voiced, Spike in, uh, in the original G1 Japanese dub, and of course, outside of that, he was in a lot of anime. He was the voice of Maximilian Genius in uh, SGF Macross, and... 
Enrico Maxwell in Helsing OVA. So the man has been in quite a lot, but really, what else is there to say about Vector Prime? He is the guardian of space and time. He is the he is the guy who is in charge of keeping space and time in order. And his whole role is just as important as any. And the also thing as well is that he is a singularity, meaning there is only one of this character. So, like for example, whereas there are loads of different Optimus Primes, Megatrons, there's only one of this character. So, like for example, there's one Vector Prime, there's one the Fallen, meaning that the uh, the Fallen in Revenge of the Fallen was the same Fallen in the Fourth and Comics. I know that doesn't make sense, but just just go with it. Um, but I like this character because he's very interesting. I like the fact that the original 13 are very interesting characters, and hopefully um, we can see more toys of these characters. I know we got an Alpha Trion toy, but there you go. So, yes, that's Vector Prime's bio in a nutshell. If you want to know more, go look up on Game of Wiki. But anyway, yes, Vector Prime's toy. Now, I do like this toy a lot. I actually got this toy loose at Auto 70 2008, so I had this toy for quite a while. But I have heard very mixed receptions regarding this particular version of the toy. Now, when it comes to Vector Prime, a lot of people always go for the um, the Galaxy Force version, which of course has the more show accurate color scheme, and the plastic on the wings and the sword is much more harder as well. This one is much more different in that, of course, his um, the Galaxy Force Vector Prime had a silver color scheme. This one has a white color scheme, and it's actually not bad. It actually works very well. But I really wish, though, I could have got the Galaxy Force version, but then again, this was cheap, and this was the one thing that I bought at the end of the convention, so hey-ho. Um, his alt mode is actually very interesting, in that it's an old, ancient Cybertron cruiser, which bears resemblance to the Axelon, which was the Maximal ship in Beast Wars, and one of the Star Wars um, Sith infiltrator ships. But not only that, though, is that Vector Prime's design originates from uh, the last Autobot, the well-known Transformer that appeared at the, end of the, at the end of the original G1 Marvel comics. And I like the fact that a lot of detail went into designing this figure, because the detail on this figure is astonishingly well done. Now, from what I can understand, this figure, of course, is designed by um, Transformers fan turned, uh, character designer Hirofumi Ichikawa, who designed a lot of the, um, uh, characters in, in the Energon line. And one of the main reasons why the Energon line and the Cybertron line have really good toys is because they have, they have, they have a really good designer. And the fact that this one toy has so much detail, and the plastic on this is very good, it's very hard, Nothing wrong with it at all, nothing out of the ordinary. This is good grade A plastic. Back when plastic wasn't a very, uh, uh, what it is now, but hey ho. Um, on top of all that, though, this alt mode is in fact very, very good. I like the fact that a lot of detail went into making this alt mode. And since this is a Cybertron figure, it has a Cyber Planet key, which really doesn't do anything, but I'll just show it anyway. Um, you can see the Cyber Planet key, of course, is coated in the blue plastic which is covering the brown, but, and of course, since this is one of those Transformers that's battery powered, and the noise of it is kind of crap, but I haven't really got any batteries in it to really show you, but there are many different reviews that can show you this gimmick, but really, there's the ignition, so of course you take your Cyber Panic Key or Force Chip, and Cyber Key Power, and does nothing, but then again, there are no batteries in it, so what are you going to do? But that really isn't the problem that I have with this figure. I just think that the um, the colors for this figure are fine, but it's just the wings are very thin. Well, I wouldn't say thin, but they're flimsy, floppy plastic. In the Galaxy Force version, they're much harder, and of course, the outer rim of the wings are painted with the brown paint, which look really nice. Um, so really, what else can I say except the detail on this figure is astonishingly well done. Detail city all over the place. It's really amazing. And he has his mini con partner, Safeguard, which... Just take that off quickly, just so I can show you. Um, not really much I can say about Safeguard, except for the fact that he is, of course, put that down, Vector Prime's longest-running partner, which is a nice little minicon, nothing really special about him. You can transform him like this, which is move the legs and move the back, and there you have his little buddy. Right there, Safeguard. Need little guy as well. We'll get on to him in a little minute. Um... And of course, you can see the Autobot logo right there, and there's a button right there which of course activates the missile, which... Normally I'm not a big fan of missiles, but I think for this one it makes it's an exception, so of course press the button, and... Fires the missile, which of course is... 
blue plastic, which I guess is okay, but then again, missiles have no purpose in Transformers, I don't know why they keep putting them there, there, but whatever, it doesn't really matter. So, the alt mode, of course, is fantastic, but although this one, this particular toy has had many different recolorings over the years, and many different retoolings, and like I said before, this one was re uh, used to make Botcon off a Trion, which is a really good toy, I want to own that toy. Um, so really, this this figure is really good, but I really wish that I could have got the Galaxy Force version, but there you go. So, transforming this guy is actually a lot of fun, and I'll tell you why, because this toy has ratcheted joints all over the place in the legs and in the arms. Let's just move that bit down. The shoulders, which of course you can... Okay, like that. In the feet, ratcheted joints. That's incredible. And... Move the arms like that, ratchet the joints right there, and here you have Cybertron Vector Prime in his robot mode. And right away, I, I like this uh, this robot mode because it has a very sort of angelic um, Pope look feeling to it, and it, it, it works very well too. Um, the head sculpt, as you can see, is very nice. Not sure if you can see it on this camera very well, but he has red eyes, even though he's an Autobot, but. Whatever. The one thing I like about the head sculpt, though, is the fact that the face has, um, up to right about here, it has a very Megatronish uh, face sculpt. And in fact, for future lines, I'd highly recommend Hasbro using this one face for Megatron. It actually looks pretty good. Very old, very ancient, very wise, but also very grimacing and very stoic. And of course, the head can rotate the 460, which helps with the transformation as well. Articulation, you already know where this is going. Um, Articulation the arms can rotate the 460 as well with loud clicking ratchet joints. Elbows can bend like that. And the knees. And the feet. So this guy is quite poseable. You can actually have him doing a lot of different poses to make him really, really badass. Really ancient, very stoic. Um, in terms of weaponry, there's his sword which is hidden inside the uh, jet piece. Take that out. And the one thing as well is, let's put this guy down, the sword, of course, is blue plastic as well, but for some reason, on the hilt, doesn't it look like a heart to you? Just look at that for a straight second. That looks a lot like a heart. Um, I don't know whether at the time uh, the designers were thinking of uh, making a crossover um, with this guy in Kingdom Hearts. Hmm, Jesus. Uh... <laughs> Now I'm suddenly scared of a Transformers Kingdom Hearts crossover. The ideas that that could probably crop up are really weird. But yes, the sword is blue plastic, which is quite okay, I suppose. It's floppy, but different on the Galaxy Force version, I think. So, of course, you put the sword in one of the hands, and here you have him mounted with a sword looking very, very cool. And of course, if you want, you can actually have Safeguard as a fusion cannon. So just transform back into jet mode, and you can actually have this guy on one of the mini compegs. And there you go. Now, would I recommend this figure? Well, I would recommend this figure, but only the Galaxy Force version. I mean, this one is just, it's okay. It's an okay version of the toy, but the Galaxy Force version, from what I've heard, is so much better in terms of uh, color scheme and plastic as well, in terms of the wings and the sword, but this figure is beautiful in terms of detail. It just looks really, really good. The colors work very well, very angelic, very mystical, and it's one of those figures that I think anyone who's a fan of the Cybertron line ought to have. And if you want good detail in figures, it's really good. But yes, a Vector Prime, one of the original 13 Transformers, uh, the Guardian of Space and Time, really cool character. Um, I wouldn't recommend you watch Cybertron or Galaxy Force, but it's up to you, though. But this toy is quite, quite good. I would recommend it, but only the Galaxy Force version, though. So, there you go. But yes, this has been Cybertron Vector Prime, and I'm Skulking1 for O. All assembly is drawing here, folks. Let the fun begin. See you all there.